This video is gonna do horrible and I don't give a rat's so there's another art supply that I love using. I love to use, I never do it. I have them on my shelf. I bought them one time. I may have used them once or twice on the channel, but really I don't ever go to grab them and pick them up. But I want to this time. Paint markers, I love paint markers. The Posca markers are great. They're the standard. If you ever see a paint marker standard, it's Posca, everybody uses them. But these Thule Arts, I like these. I picked those up. I think they were given to me as a gift. I think you have to go back and look at that video somewhere. It's actually done pretty good on the channel, but people don't like to look at markers. They, they hate looking at the videos about the markers. Well, these acrylic paint markers are awesome. I use them sometimes. I like to do the little rock thing. I remember I talked about that, draw little rock things and little art on rock, go hide it in a park somewhere. Some kid finds it, they think they found a treasure. It's a wonderful thing. But let me show you why I'm doing this today. Okay, so you're gonna take a small walk with me here. Let me get some light on. And so this is this is the lab now. This is the lab and our we have a little studio thing. This other bedroom here is the lab. That's where my wife works a lot. She does some wood stuff. Look at this crazy stuff that she does. Look at that. That's what the laser cut out and there's like a hundred different layers in there and there's a clock. That's wonderful. Little cow thing that she does, little wine holder cases. Absolutely beautiful. There's a wolf that's not done. She didn't fix that yet. But anyway. This is a side project that I have. I like to build guitar pedals. So I started doing that not that long ago. And I've got a bunch of components there. I got a breadboard there that I put all the parts on. So that, that is the first pedal that I designed myself. And those are all the electronics on there. And there's some wires hanging off so I can plug it into this one over here and I can make it work. And then I plug it into the little amp, the tiny amp right there and just hear how it sounds. Now, one of the things that I will be doing is putting together a pedal out of that circuit right there. Hopefully some of that was in focus. I have no idea. I wasn't really looking at the screen when I was doing that. But anyway, I'm going to take those components and stick them inside of a pedal and create my own pedal. So I need to paint the outside container that it's going in, the pedal that it's going in. I'm going to customize it. I'm going to paint it with these, some of these paint markers right here. And then I'm going to put it inside and maybe I'll let you hear what it sounds like at the end. I don't know if I can do that. It depends on if it works or not. It works on the breadboard, but I don't know if when I, once I put it all together on the actual circuit board, if it's actually going to work. I have no idea. And if I hook everything up right or you mess up one little thing, the whole thing doesn't work. You have to spend a month tracing down what went wrong, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. The point is I'm creating that. So I'm going to share it with you and I'm going to paint with paint markers. I love these things. I use them for other things. I just don't use them, usually use them on the channel much or for regular art. If I go, oh, I'm going to go paint something and grab them and do it. But I use them for a lot of other stuff, a lot of touch up stuff. And I need to use them a lot more because I absolutely love them. And some of these colors, these, these, they're muted color. They're beautiful. I have them right here. They're right there. I just never grab for them. That's just, that's my own problem. All right. So the, again, I'm going to say it. Those of you who stick around to actually watch this video, you're the only one who matters on this type of thing. I'm talking directly to you. I know the people that are going to watch my videos, no matter, I, I could paint a fly and they'd watch it. It just, that's how wonderful you are. So I'm gonna talk to you people about some stuff. All right, let's get into that. Okay, so I did spray paint this thing first. I went outside and did that. And then, and I didn't record that. And later I'm going to spray it with a varnish. You're not gonna see that either. You're just gonna see me put the artwork on the, on the pedal itself. And I'm just trying to do something that I normally do. Some of the paint markers were a little dry at first, but it was my fault. They actually weren't dry. I just didn't get the, the paint flowing well enough. So again, all on me. Usually when things go wrong here, it's on me. I say that all the time. But I did enjoy using them, and I do like using them for a lot of things. I like putting artwork on things that are just not in the sketchbook. I don't recommend using any kind of felt tip markers inside of a sketchbook, you're gonna scratch the paper. And that's one of the, th I just, now you can do it if you want to. 
I just, I'm a tactile person, and when I feel that scratching on the paper, I can't stand it. It absolutely annoys the crap out of me. I'd rather throw the marker in the garbage than actually do that with it. But I do like working on other surfaces with these markers. And this is one of the surfaces. Anything that's been um, painted, it, it has a clear coat of, of primer on, uh, not clear coat, it has a white coat of primer on it. And that's fine. Anything that's hard, you can put it on rocks or anything else like that. It's fine. And this is not a review. Don't even, don't go to that part of the world with me. This is not a review. I'm just showing you products that I enjoy. It's general. I'm not saying these in particular markers. These are just ones I have. But I have Posca and then I have these. I have some other ones too, but I... I let my wife use those because she's doing her wood thing and she needs paint markers too. So she's using those. Those are those soft ones that I got there. Those are good too. They have the soft felt. These are like the hard felt and they scratch the paper and things like that when you're using them. And I don't like the way that that feels. But I do like them on something like this. That's all I'm saying. So you're going to get a special talk here because someone commented. It was uh, at what Jen Ren commented and said, art has no rules, that's what makes it so incredible. And I say that all the time, art has no rules. But then someone else steps in and, and at Base Potter 46 says, they'll say that, you know, you have to understand the rules to then break the rules. And then that was something I believe, let me just get here. Yeah, that's what they said. Yeah, Picasso is attributed with saying that you learn the rules like a pro so you can break them as an artist. And, and they're not disagreeing with me. It wasn't a... And listen, anytime you disagree with something I say, I'm okay. I'm I'm happy to have the conversation. I never take anything negative. I never take anything like you're attacking me or you're just trying to be malicious or anything like that. I'm just having a conversation. But it's hard to come across with your tone in a text. So I, I'm, I'm not being defensive or anything else. I'm just saying, yeah, I think this and you think this. It's all fine. Whatever you want to do is what you want to do. But what I was saying is, so I agree with some of what they say. And it was, um, even Bruce Lee said, no form comes from having form. That was something he was famous for saying. It's, it's a popular thing when you teach someone something that you say, okay, first you learn the right way to do something. And then you can learn the different ways that you can go about not doing it that way and get away with it. Put your own flair on it, put your own spin on it. But when, it, and I can see that for just about everything. But when it comes to art, I will say that it's more form than rules. So if you want to learn how to paint like one of the great masters, like a Rembrandt or something like that. By the way, I love Rembrandt's paintings. I think I bring that up quite a bit, but I do. Rembrandt's one of my favorite artists to look at their work because of how they use the light and how it's just, it's amazing. I love all the dark space. That's what I like in a Rembrandt. But anyway. When you, when you look at an old master's uh, work and you say, oh, okay, I want to learn how to paint like them, you do have to learn their form. You have to learn how they do things, learn their palettes, and then you can follow those rules, and then later you can break those rules to make it a little bit more your own. I get that. I understand it. Same thing happens with drawing. If you want to learn how to draw a head or a face or something like that, there are some guidelines that people will show you yeah, first you make the circle and then you put the little square at the bottom of the circle and you and then you do all that stuff. So there are ways to learn. However, I do not think any of it is necessary to learn to do art. I think you can just pick up your stuff and do what you do and it will work itself out. Once you do something you enjoy doing, as long as you're getting the result that you want. Now, if you're not getting the result you want, then you have to go look and say, well, how does someone do that? And then follow their form and to get to that point. But it's not a rule. It's not something that they absolutely, you have to do this thing or you have to use watercolor like this. You should never use this in watercolor. You should only like, you hear that a lot. And I really, I do not like those rules because it kind of crushes people's creativity. If I tell you, you can never use white in watercolor because that's a rule that a lot of watercolorists do. They, they tell you that. They say you cannot use white in watercolor or black in watercolor. You can't do that either. Now, if someone says you should try and use like a blue with a bl mixed with a black so because it gives you a more of a natural shade or something, I understand what they're saying, but you don't have to do that. 
You could do whatever you want to do. You can make the shadows green. You can make the shadows purple. Unless you're trying to do something a specific way, you can do whatever you want with art. And as long as you're happy with it, and as long as you're doing and getting the end result that you want, you can go ahead and do that. That's why I say there's no rules with art. You do whatever you want to do, however you want to do it. If you want to talk about techniques and things like that, that's a different story. You can take a technique and say, well, how do you do this technique? Because I'd like to get that result. That means you're not getting the result that you want. So yes, go look at the technique. Go figure out how it's done. I have no problem with that. But you just don't have to do that. And I think that's the part where the rules kind of get out of play here. You don't have to follow rules with art. You can do whatever you want so long as you're getting the result you're happy with. But everyone needs to start somewhere. And I will give that person credit in saying this. Um, you know, when, when I first started art as a child, my, it was my grandmother originally who said, let's draw. And, and she started to show me, you know, you're a little kid, so you draw by just scribbling and, you know, your, your clouds are like rings and your houses are triangles. And it's just, you just do basic stuff as a kid because those are the things you see. But then she said, no, if you look at it like this, you can maybe try to do this and make it like this. And she taught me like that. And it was I was able to have some kind of foundation with drawing that she showed me. Absolutely. It wasn't a rule that I had to do it. It was just somewhere that I could start. So you got to start somewhere. And I think that's really where the idea of you have to start with rules to then break away from the rules. I think that's where that comes from. You have to start doing something that is already done and then figure out your way down that path. So that's that's a true statement. You have to, when you look at something, you get inspired by someone else's art, you like to see how they do it. And sometimes you like to copy how they do it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just not a rule. You do whatever you want. So I'm being extremely literal when I say that there are no rules in art. You don't have to use the rule of thirds. You don't have to use the golden ratio. You don't have to use split primaries. You don't. You can use white and black in watercolor. You can do whatever you want, regardless of what. You can draw with your wrist instead of with your shoulder if you want to. Look at how small this pedal is. I'm drawing with my wrist. If I draw with my shoulder, I'd be drawing off my onto my desk. You can do whatever you want to do, however you want to do it. I'm also holding it like a pen instead of holding it all the way back. Some people extend their arms out with their paintbrush like three feet from their canvas and they use this long brush and they paint. And you're told you're supposed to do that. That's what you're supposed to do. And other people take their paintbrush and they get right up on it like what I do. And they hold it almost like a pencil and get, get real close to it. And they come up with the result they want. So it doesn't matter what the rule is. You can try different things, but the rule is absolute nonsense. I don't like the, the word itself. And if you're being literal with that word, I disagree with you. However, I do want to thank this person for having this conversation with me because I have no friends, so I don't really talk to anybody, and this gave me an opportunity to pretend I had one. So by the way, this pedal, you're not going to hear this at the end because it didn't work. So I tell you, you saw the little, well, you'll see a picture at the end of the inside of the box. It's all, the wires are everywhere because I didn't need, tighten them up because it didn't work. I was going to put everything nice and tidy once I had it working. Did not start to work. It works on the breadboard, like I said. You just plug it in. It works. The, the circuit itself is good. I think some of the other connections may have been bad. I bought this little uh, green... Uh, connector for the foot switch and I think that is bad because it had a little nick in it and I think it's cutting the signal somewhere so I've got to redo the pedal and then I'll uh, you probably won't hear it ever but I'm going to redo it and then put it into another enclosure that's a little bit wider because I think it could have been my fault and I'm not saying it came like that I could have been trying to put things in there and move things around and could have nicked it and cut the the uh, the, the the solder pad a little bit so it could have been my fault I don't know it usually is like I said everything's usually my fault so that's a good bet if you were bet a betting person I would bet on it being my fault 
But I still had fun creating this, and I'm going to make another one here soon because I'm working on another design. And it's just something that I like to do. I just like to sit back and play with circuits and see what kind of noises I can make with them and see what kind of pedals I can make and things. And if you learn how to do that, it's a valuable skill, actually, if, if you're ever into music and you want to try and learn that. It's very valuable because anything you see in the store that is a two, three hundred, four hundred dollar pedal, you can just make it in your home and you don't have to spend that money. It costs you pennies compared to what it is there. Some of those components that are in there, they're like a half a cent or three cents or something like that. They're not very expensive. So you can have a lot of them and you can put things together how you want and change sounds and play with it all day and you're not soldering anything till the very end. Those breadboards are really nice. You just poke into them and they have like holders. They have metal clips on this side of each hole so you don't have to solder anything. You just pop stuff in and see how it sounds. And it's, it's fun. I have a good time with it. But I don't get a lot of time to do it because most of my free time is not really free time. I'm doing this and this takes a lot of time. But I, when I do get some time, I love to do it. I love to just sit back relax and, and do some of that. And as every creative person knows, when you are a creative person, you like to do different things. You just like to create. Sometimes it doesn't even matter what you're creating. You just like to create stuff. Just ask these people popping up on the screen here. They know all about creating. They help me create every single week. And they, I know that they saw this video to the very end. They're still watching it. They're listening to me ramble. They're going to wait until the very end when the credits roll. That's kind of the same thing. They're watching it to this point. So anyway, you know what I'm saying. So thumb up the video. If you're going to go get some paint markers, I don't care what they are, what brand they are, which ones they are, you're going to get some paint markers and just have some fun and paint on some stuff. Go and get yourself a nice little tray table or something like that and just paint on it. Just paint whatever you want on the surface of it. Seal it with some spray varnish or whatever. And then just have some fun or you want to go paint, you're going to buy a, a, a mug or something. You go paint on it. Just paint whatever you want on it, your own design on it and seal it. Just never put it in the dishwasher. It's a hand wash only at that point. You don't want to destroy what you just did, but you can paint on anything. Just make sure that when it's not good, you can, you know, you can do something else or you can paint over it with something else. And that's the wonderful thing about paint. You can always paint over whatever you don't like. That's a good thing. All right. If you would like to join our community, go to illustrationsbypete.com. You can come in, you can put your own artwork on the site and promote it. You can find some inspiration in the free reference photos. You can just use them however you want in your artwork. You do not need to credit me. Or you can come into the forums and talk to some people and maybe give some advice and maybe find a little bit of information that helps you. So come check us out. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one.